The A Team is a popular TV series that started in 1983. It's about a group of former soldiers who were wrongly accused of a crime. They now work as mercenaries to help people in need. The show is known for its action, humor, and memorable characters. Many viewers find the character played by Mr. T, who is known as B, a barakist, to be their favorite because of his tough guy attitude and funny lines. The show has become a lasting symbol of the industry because of its simple yet exciting stories and the strong bond between the team members. These qualities have allowed it to remain popular over the years. Now, we'd like to hear from you. What is your most treasured memory or personal experience related to the A-Team? Your stories and memories are important to us, so please share them in the comments below. Stay tuned for more surprising, amusing, and touching facts about the show. Keep watching. The A-Team, a television series from the 1980s, follows the adventures of four Vietnam veterans who, after being wrongly accused of a crime, escape military custody and become mercenaries for hire. The team is led by the cunning Hannibal Smith, played by George Papar, known for his masterful disguises. Accompanying him are Templeton Faceman Peck, portrayed by Dirk Benedict as the charming con artist, B. Abarakis, played by Mr. T, the strong and intimidating mechanic with a fear of flying, and the eccentric pilot Howling Mad Murdoch, brought to life by Dwight Schultz. Together, they traverse the United States and occasionally the globe to help those in need while evading capture by military police, represented by characters like Colonel Decker and Captain Crane. The show is celebrated for its blend of humor, action, and memorable characters, delivering non-stop entertainment with a mix of car chases, explosions, and daring stunts. It features a host of guest stars, including William Lucking and Robert Vaughn, adding to the dynamic storytelling. The series' impact extended beyond television with a film adaptation directed by Joe Carnahan, starring Liam Neeson and Bradley Cooper, which pays tribute to the original while introducing the characters to a new generation. The A Team remains a beloved series that captured the hearts of viewers with its unique blend of excitement and humor, making it a staple of 1980s television. Terribly difficult. Would you pull one for me? In the landscape of television villains, Morgan Woodward stood out in the late 1960s as a sought-after antagonist, recognized by a major publication for his commanding presence. Meanwhile, Hulk Hogan, a household name in wrestling, shared an interesting tidbit about a film role he allegedly declined, which was later contested by the film's director. Adding to the mix of behind-the-scenes facts, an action-packed episode from the first season featured a dramatic plane landing sequence that was also used in a well-known comedy film, showcasing the recycling of footage in the industry. These snippets provide a glimpse into the off-screen narratives that contribute to the making of memorable television moments. Look at five. The Lord will prevail. In the landscape of television, actors come and go, leaving behind a trail of memorable performances. Robert Vaughn, known for his role in the Action Pack series, passed away shortly before Fritz Weaver, recognized for his portrayal of the first villain in The Man from UNCLE. Despite Vaughn's significant presence in The Magnificent Seven, his character spoke just 16 lines. The series itself drew inspiration for its name from the U.S. Army Special Forces of Teams during the Vietnam War marking the first time these units were actively deployed in combat. Hero, the most brutal torture in Argentina. There are about 10 governments who want him. In a unique blend of reality and fiction, the character known as B, a on-screen often donned a military police uniform, mirroring Mr. T's actual service in the military police corps. This authentic detail added a layer of realism to the episodes, especially those set on military bases. Meanwhile, Robert Vaughn, known for his role alongside David McCallum in The Man from UNCLE, also shared the screen with McCallum in this series, marking a reunion of sorts. Adding to the show's nods to historical military elements, H.M. Murdoch's jacket featured a tiger emblem, a homage to the Flying Tigers, the American volunteer group that fought in World War II. These details contributed to the show's connection with real military history and culture. Grandfather say, freedom is like hiccup. You must lose it before it is appreciated. In a twist of fate, 
a team of former soldiers found themselves accused of a bank robbery they were ordered to commit. Their mission in Vietnam, under the directive of Colonel Samuel Morrison, was to rob the Bank of Hanoi, which they did successfully. However, upon their return, they discovered the tragic loss of Colonel Morrison and the destruction of their base by the Viet Cong, erasing all proof of their orders. Meanwhile, Robert Vaughn and his wife Linda Staub have stepped away from the glamour of award ceremonies, preferring the comfort of their home for such events. Adding a touch of humor to the action, the show's writers, led by Stephen J. Kennel, included a spectacular car crash in nearly every episode, challenging the boundaries of realism as characters emerged without a scratch. Way to the Regency. Oh, forget the Regency. I'd like to buy you two dreamboats a drink. <laughs> War as hell, Miss Laval. In the world of professional wrestling, Hulk Hogan stood out as a six-time WWF champion, with his final victory in May 22 marking the end of an era. Meanwhile, Dana Elkar's directorial skills were recognized with the Drama Log Award for Outstanding Direction in 1986 for The Play Rat and the Skull. The show in question, by its fifth season, had shifted significantly from its beginnings. No longer on the run from the military, the team took on a new format, reminiscent of Mission Impossible, leading to mixed reactions from its audience, as some felt it lost the original edge that defined its earlier seasons. Now don't get cocky, Butch. We could chew a hole in the wall and come get you. I won't hold my breath. In the first season, viewers learned that the leader of the group, known for his cunning plans, also works as an actor. This side job at a major studio explains how he can supply the team with various disguises and equipment throughout their adventures. Despite the frequent action-packed scenes involving brawls and gunfights, the show maintains a family-friendly atmosphere by ensuring that no lives are taken. The action sequences are designed to be thrilling yet suitable for all ages. Additionally, one of the actors from the show holds the music from a classic Western film in high regard, even using its theme as a personal ringtone, highlighting the influence of cinematic elements on the series. Then, uh, you go take a look at it, talk it over, and if you have any questions, I'll be around to answer them. There you go. In the world of television, unexpected turns can lead to new opportunities. After a successful run in film, George Papar found renewed fame through his role in a popular series, despite having faced personal challenges. Meanwhile, Robert Vaughn, known for his earlier work alongside David McCallum in espionage themed shows, shared the screen with notable actors like Steve McQueen in acclaimed movies. In a different arena, Hulk Hogan, a wrestling icon, experienced a less favorable moment in 1996, participating in a match that was critically panned. These instances reflect the varied paths careers can take in the entertainment industry. I have your brother here with me. Would you care to talk with him? You have my brother. In the Action Pack series, a team of former Special Forces soldiers operates as mercenaries, taking on missions to protect those in need. They are pursued by the military for a crime they didn't commit, echoing the themes of pursuit and justice found in The Fugitive. Their operations are reminiscent of Mission Impossible, with elaborate plans to outwit their adversaries. George Papar, who played the team's leader, expressed a sense of relief when the show concluded, comparing its intense and relentless production to an unstoppable train. Contrary to popular belief, the van driven by the character B, a Barakis is not entirely black. It features a distinctive two-tone color scheme with dark charcoal above the red stripe and black below. This detail is often overlooked, but is a key aspect of the show's visual identity. We're gonna be out there all alone. Oh man, you make me nostalgic. And we're gonna be on the run forever. It's a long time. In the initial episode, the character of Face was played by Tim Dunigan. However, due to his appearance not fitting the Vietnam veteran profile, Dirk Benedict later took over the role. Tia Kerr was slated to appear as a new character in the final season, but contractual obligations with another show prevented this, leading to the character's removal. Additionally, the disparity in fan attention, particularly Mr. T's significant fan mail volume compared to his co-stars, created tension on set, notably with George Papar. And you accuse me of getting senile? <laughs> He's just angry. Tensions on set can rise, as was the case with George Papar and Mr. T, whose working relationship deteriorated during the show's initial run.
Cultural adaptations can lead to changes in character names, evident in the Italian version where face becomes Esperilla, and B, it is referred to as Pesimo Elemento. An interesting first encounter occurred between Dwight Schultz and George Papar. Schultz's polite introduction was met with Papar's candid self-assessment, stating he was not a very nice man. These behind-the-scenes interactions offer a glimpse into the dynamics that shaped the production. Censoring unenlightened male conflict. Both of you fighting over an inanimate object. What this crazy man talking about now? In a notable turn of events, cast members George Papar and Mr. T reconciled their differences shortly before Papar passed away. For viewers in Brazil, the characters received names more familiar to them face became Cara. Hannibal was renamed Hannibal, and B, a took on the pronunciation Barra, while Murdoch retained his original name. The series also featured real locations. The building portrayed as the hospital from which Murdoch is rescued is actually the Sepulveda Veterans Hospital in North Hill, California, which has since been used as a filming location for the medical drama Grey's Anatomy. of television, creative conflicts are not uncommon, and such was the case with Melinda Kelia, who parted ways with the show due to disagreements with the producers. Her desire for a more substantial role, including increased dialogue and participation in action scenes, was at the heart of the dispute. Meanwhile, Robert Vaughn, with a career spanning numerous films, had reservations about the success of two particular movies, The Magnificent Seven and Bullet, during their production. Despite his doubts, both films went on to become significant. Additionally, Vaughn played a pivotal role in shaping the cast of The Magnificent Seven by recommending James Coburn, a college friend, for a key role, which he secured just as an actor's strike loomed, thanks to director John Sturge's openness to Vaughn's suggestion. You wanted war, Reverend? Armed with an arsenal reminiscent of the Vietnam War, the team initially wielded Colt 45 pistols, M16 rifles, M60 machine guns, M79 grenade launchers, Remington 870 shotguns, and Remington 700 sniper rifles. As time progressed, they upgraded their M16s to Ruger Mini 14 ranch rifles with folding stocks. The team sharpshooter preferred a stainless steel Smith and Wesson 357 Magnum, while the leader carried a 9mm Smith and Wesson semi-automatic. An Uzi submachine gun was also part of their weaponry, and a commando dagger was a constant presence on the leader's bill lieutenant in a notable crossover event. Hulk Hogan faced the Ultimate Warrior in 1990, a match that became the highlight of WrestleMania Roman VI. Behind the scenes, the show maintained a tight production schedule, filming episodes a mere five weeks before they were broadcasted to audiences. I gotta go. Hey, Joe. In the early stages of the show, despite the recent tragic accident on the set of another production, the team performed numerous helicopter and aerial stunts deemed safe at the time. As the second season progressed, the focus shifted to more controlled stunts involving vehicles and explosions. Helicopter stunts were cautiously reintroduced in the third season's Road Games episode. Meanwhile, Hulk Hogan, who guest starred in the show, released a biography in 2000 and had earlier chosen Ravishing, a song by Jim Steinman and performed by Bonnie Tyler as his wrestling entrance theme during his tenure with World Championship Wrestling. Well, you must be, uh... In the landscape of television, actors often cross paths in various roles, and Robert Vaughn was no exception. Before joining the team, he was known for portraying Napoleon Solo across three series, showcasing his ability to maintain a character's essence across different narratives. On set, Vaughn played a key role in mediating conflicts, notably between George Papar and Mr. T, though he reportedly found Mr. T's personality challenging at times. Meanwhile, Dirk Benedict, who had previously battled Cylons as Lieutenant Starbuck, gave a nod to his past in the opening credits, acknowledging a Cylon warrior, thus connecting his former and current roles in a subtle tribute to his career trajectory. And then sell that free pen, sell that little critter for big money. 
In the pursuit of an acting career, Anthony James faced the hardships of life in Los Angeles with his mother, both taking on menial jobs to afford acting lessons. Their journey from Greece and the struggle for a better life culminated in James' eventual rise in the acting world. Meanwhile, Dirk Benedict's character in the series, known for his smooth-talking persona, was revealed to have a different real name, Richard Bancroft, in a twist that added depth to his backstory. Despite criticism for its exaggerated action and lack of realism, the show's popularity soared, proving that the audience's enjoyment outweighed critical opinion. The success of the series was a testament to its appeal to viewers who favored entertainment over critical accuracy. Robert Vaughn, known for his work in cinema, shared the screen with Steve McQueen in three notable films, The Magnificent Seven, Bullet, and The Towering Inferno. His career also includes roles in two films that received Best Picture nominations at the Academy Awards. On a lighter note, the cast members faced a unique challenge after gaining weight during a break. They competed to see who could lose weight the fastest, with Dwight Schultz coming out on top. Benadol is not only too slim, but event use can also cause temporary am Before he became known for his role as the leader of a group of ex-commandos, George Papar was considered for a part in a classic Western film, which eventually went to Steve McQueen. Meanwhile, Mr. T's portrayal of a tough uh, and no-nonsense sergeant earned him a reputation that resonated with the audience's perception of his character's name. Despite the show's success and the opportunity to connect with fans across Europe, George Papar chose not to participate in the promotional tour with the rest of the cast. Look, Murdoch, I think they recognize this as the guys who uh, shut down their playground, so... Uh... Friendship and rivalries often shape the dynamics on a television set. Dana Elkar, for instance, formed a significant bond with Richard Dean Anderson during an earlier project, which led to Elkar's casting in a pivotal role on MacGyver. His presence became a staple throughout the series, only stepping down due to health issues later on. On another front, the tension between Mr. T and George Papar was palpable among the cast. Despite Papar's established acting credentials, Mr. T's rising popularity and higher salary created a notable rift. In a different twist of fate, Morgan Woodward's family connection led to an unexpected namesake. His uncle's medical assistance during a childbirth inspired the parents to name their son after him, who would eventually gain fame as Tex Ritter. These off-screen stories add layers to the on-screen action, reflecting the real human experiences behind the camera. Listen, that's terrific. We work fast. No, oh, he's got a point. They had some Hannibal. I mean, Duke vanishes, we had... Behind the scenes, the show had its share of challenges and changes that impacted its course. For instance, the character known as B.A., portrayed by Mr. T, had a softer side revealed when his mother called him Scooter, a childhood nickname that showed a different facet of his on-screen persona. The addition of new cast members in the final season, notably Robert Vaughn as General Hunt Stockwell and Eddie Velez as Frankie Santana, marked a significant shift in the show's direction. This change, which saw the team working under military command, was not well received by the audience, leading to a decline in viewership, and the show's eventual conclusion after the fifth season. George Papar, who played the leading role of Hannibal, was well aware of the high stakes involved with his casting. Known for his challenging demeanor, he was cautioned that any misstep could potentially end his career, a risk that underscored the volatile nature of the industry during that era. Was Stan King. He wound up in a ditch outside of town the day after he announced he was running. Sounds like this guy Dawson need to be taught a One character's sharp mind contrasts his seemingly erratic behavior, displaying knowledge across various fields, and staying informed on global affairs. His language skills span several major tongues, and he's adept in Morse code, complemented by a remarkable memory. This suggests his perceived instability might be overstated. Another character, known for his wild demeanor, goes by a moniker that's hinted to be more than just a nickname, with some references to him as Jim. Meanwhile, a team member with the initials B, A is actually named Bosco Albert, which aligns with his bad attitude nickname, as revealed in the show's pilot episode. Help! It's withering in the heat, alone. We want the van or the plant, we better get moving. Yeah, you're right, Hannibal. 
A notable guest star on the show was Hulk Hogan, whose diverse heritage includes Italian, Irish, English, Scottish, and French roots. His unique nickname Hulk was inspired by his towering stature, which surpassed that of Lou Ferrigno, the actor known for portraying the Incredible Hulk. In the United Kingdom, the show found an unexpected home in the early evening time slot on NTV, a period typically reserved for family viewing. Despite its action-packed nature, the show was deemed suitable for children due to its non-lethal violence, reminiscent of animated cartoons like Tom and Jerry. This approach to programming, which included other American series such as Knight Rider and Airwolf, proved to be a hit with younger audiences, especially during the summer months when football was off-season. In the action-packed series, Robert Vaughn brought his experience from significant roles in three acclaimed films to the screen. His performances in The Ten Commandments, The Magnificent Seven, and Bullet earned these films a place in the National Film Registry for their importance. The character of Hannibal, known for his strategic genius, was decorated with the highest military honors, reflecting bravery and service, including the Medal of Honor and the Purple Heart. In a memorable crossover, Hulk Hogan joined the cast in 1985, the same year he teamed up with Mr. T in the wrestling ring at WrestleMania I, blending the worlds of wrestling and television drama. I think what you guys make in a year. Cast on my guts, kid. In the world of professional wrestling, Hulk Hogan faced significant defeats at the Skydome in Toronto, Canada, losing to the Ultimate Warrior Jim Helwig in 1990 and to Dwayne Johnson in 22. Meanwhile, Mr. T, known for his tough guy persona, had an unexpected turn in the film Freaked, portraying the bearded lady. However, he abruptly left the production, expressing his discomfort with the role. In a different vein, Dwight Schultz, who played a key role in a popular action series, proposed a unique ending for the show. He suggested a finale where the team's plan fails, leading to each member vanishing, leaving only Hannibal standing, reminiscent of John Wayne's portrayal of Davy Crockett. However, this idea was not embraced by others. Passed a few sentences myself, my friend. Well, if you like, why don't you have me Real life military backgrounds added authenticity to the show, with George Papar, Eddie Velas, and Mr. T bringing their own service experiences from the Marines, Air Force, and Army, respectively. On screen fatalities were rare, totaling five throughout the show's run, including the notable death of General Harlan Bull Fulbright. The fate of three others remained uncertain. The Spanish adaptation introduced unique names for the characters, with Face becoming Fav, Bia Baracus turning into Mario Baracus, and Howling Mad Murdoch known as El Loco Murdoch, reflecting the show's international appeal and the adaptability of its characters to different cultures. I have your brother here with me. Would you care to talk with him? You have my brother. In the early days of his wrestling career, Hulk Hogan was known as Terry the Hulk Boulder. Later, he became a cultural icon and made appearances in various media, including a popular action-adventure television series. Robert Vaughn, another familiar face, lent his voice to a scripted podcast called Powder Burns, where he appeared in an episode that coincided with the release of a major film reboot of a classic spy series he once starred in. The show about a team of Vietnam veterans was part of a television lineup that included Riptide, another series focusing on Vietnam veterans, showcasing the era's interest in the lives of these soldiers post-war. Presidente's daughter, expect me to believe that. If she says she's Richter's daughter, then she's Richter's daughter. In the show's fifth season, Robert Vaughn joined the cast due to his friendship with George Papar aiming to smooth over the discord between Papar and Mr. T, the Spanish adaptation saw face renamed as Phoenix and Bia Baracus as M.A. Baracus, translating to bad attitude. Despite initial resistance from NBC executives to Murdoch's character for being excessively flamboyant, audience approval ensured his continuation on the show. Brother, let me tell you something. Nobody ever pushed me around. Viewers who watch several episodes back to back may notice variations in the length of the closing credits and theme music. This was a practical solution to episodes that ran shorter than the allotted time, 
using extended recaps with shots from the episode to fill the gap. On the other hand, some episodes feature a much shorter credit sequence. Robert Vaughn, known for his political activism, was approached by the California Democratic Party to run against Ronald Reagan for governor. Despite his opposition to Reagan's policies, Vaughn chose to support Governor Brown, who was defeated by Reagan. The party also considered Gregory Peck as a candidate. Vaughn also holds a unique place in cinematic history. Following the passing of Charles Bronson in 23, he became the last of the actors who portrayed the main characters in The Magnificent Seven to be alive. This distinction was further solidified after Lai Wallach's death in 2014, making Vaughn the final surviving star of the classic film until his own passing in 2016 at the age of 83. Must consider the possibilities that were to fall into the hands of a lunatic terrorist group. Look. After wrapping up his role in The Protectors, Robert Vaughn had a change of heart about the series, growing to acknowledge its merits. On set, George Papar's character, known for his distinctive cigars, smoked ones from Papar's own collection. Vaughn's versatility as an actor was evident as he portrayed similar roles in two different adaptations of the classic Seven Samurai, showcasing his ability to adapt to various genres while maintaining a consistent character essence. In a gathering of fans in the Netherlands, Dirk Benedict and Dwight Schultz, both actors from the popular action-adventure series, reunited, sharing the stage once again. Within the team's dynamic, Sergeant B, a Baraka stood out as the sole non-officer member, bringing a unique perspective to the group's missions. Prior to their collaboration on the show, George Papar and Robert Vaughn had already shared the screen, showcasing their chemistry in the science fiction film Battle Beyond the Stars, with Papar playing cowboy and Vaughn as Jelt. Bob McKeever's golf partner. Yeah, I just met the gentleman. He's, uh, he's over there putting his clubs in the cart. Ah, thanks. In a turn of events reflecting the impact of real-world violence on television programming, a popular action series was pulled from its regular Saturday night slot by a TV in the United Kingdom. This decision came in the wake of a tragic shooting incident in Hungerford on August 19, 1987, where 16 lives were lost. The show's portrayal of heroism also influenced other media, as seen in the character Hawk from the 1991 movie Vendetta, inspired by professional wrestler Hulk Hogan. Behind the scenes, the series faced its own conflicts, notably involving George Papar. His strong opposition to female roles within the team led to tension with actresses Melinda Culia and Marla Heasley, both of whom eventually left the show. Papar's stance was clear. He believed the inclusion of a female character was not essential to the team's dynamic. We'll get the luggage. You just close the door. Before his role in the well-known action series, Robert Vaughn was in the running to portray Thomas Hagen in The Godfather, a part that ultimately went to Robert Duvall. George Papar, who played the leader of the group, had a diverse background. Born to a building contractor and an opera singer, he joined the Marine Corps at 17 and pursued higher education at Purdue and Carnegie Mellon. His college years included membership in the Beta Theta Pi fraternity. Known for his adaptability, Papar frequently appeared in various guises on screen, assuming roles such as an old fisherman, a Chinese laundry owner, a pool shark, a hobo, a sleazy film producer, and an Irish storyteller, showcasing his range as an actor. Be nice to me. Right, especially to the less fortunate. Templeton Peck, this is Johnny A. In a show filled with high octane action, it's notable that despite frequent shootouts and vehicular chaos, fatalities are absent, making it a unique spectacle of non-lethal confrontations. Adding to the drama, Robert Vaughn, known for his role in two versions of The Magnificent Seven, brought a touch of classic Hollywood to the cast. Meanwhile, Marla Heasley's addition to the team, despite her absence from the opening credits, marked a significant yet understated change in the dynamic of the ensemble. In the world of television, unexpected connections between celebrities and products sometimes emerge. Such was the case with Hulk Hogan, who missed out on endorsing a grill that became synonymous with George Foreman, leading to a significant financial windfall for the former boxer. The series itself, known for a blend of action, 
and humor rarely depicted serious injuries from gunfire. Yet, three members of the team did experience gunshot wounds in various episodes, with one character, Murdoch, being shot twice. Another member, B.A., was wounded off-screen and faced sustained injuries in a separate incident. The leader, Hannibal, while never shot, suffered injuries from an accident involving crates. Adding to its unique place in television history, the show's pilot episode was broadcast following one of the most watched sporting events, Super Bowl 17, capitalizing on the massive audience the event draws annually. In crafting the memorable team of operatives, the creators tailored the role of the tough but kind-hearted bee at Baracus specifically for Mr. T, a casting choice that brought a unique presence to the screen. Meanwhile, George Papar, who took on the role of the group's leader, had a brush with a different destiny before joining the team. He was initially set to portray Blake Carrington in Dynasty, but disagreements over the character's direction led to his departure and subsequent replacement by John Forsyth. Mr. T's charisma extended beyond the show, as seen in his appearance with Hulk Hogan on Saturday Night Live, where they promoted WrestleMania I despite their efforts to maintain their on-screen personas. The comedic setting proved challenging for them to stay completely in character. What kind of a friend are you? Look, it still might not be true. It's possible that he isn't your father. Yeah. Wrestling superstar Hulk Hogan, in his autobiography, revealed that his rapport with lead actors George Papar and Mr. T was a key reason the show's producers sought more of his participation. However, his wrestling commitments prevented further appearances. The series also featured a unique musical approach, with each episode containing variations of the main theme, though it remains uncertain whether these were composed specifically for each episode or selected from pre-recorded material. Stephen J. Cannell, reflecting on the series years later, admitted that the final product diverged significantly from his original vision, which was altered by Universal Television executives who had their own concept for the show. I happen to be an officer of the court. I could be disbarred for helping you guys. Oh, no, you can't. You're kidnapped by me. In a surprising turn of events during a wrestling match, Hulk Hogan faced Kevin Nash and won by simply poking him in the chest, leading to a pin. This moment marked a significant decline in the wrestling company's popularity. Meanwhile, George Papard, known for his acting skills, had a brief stint on Dynasty before being let go. The show also featured a distinctive vehicle, a 1983 GMC Vandera, notable for its changing license plates and red GMC badge in certain scenes, hinting at the use of stock footage and the character BA's knack for customizing vehicles. Howdy! Uh, howdy! What can I do for you boys? Well, we're looking for the gentleman.